Hey, what is up, everybody? Thanks for checking in today. Hope all is well in your world. This is the Creative Pursuit of Happiness podcast, where we talk about how you can live, love, work, play a little bit better, and hopefully find the life that you are looking for. My guest today is Christian Lovresich. Christian is a serial entrepreneur, uh, advertising and digital media expert, podcast host, and a YouTuber, and considers himself as a bit of a renaissance, a digital renaissance man. Uh, He is currently working to help businesses scale by harnessing the full power of Facebook ads through innovative marketing strategies, and he helps his clients cut through the noise. Hey, before we get started, though, head over to robcast.com. If you would like to support my work, big giant donate button there. Uh, But most importantly, and this is huge, for anyone who is creating content that you like, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, thumbs up, all the positive things, the little buttons around the podcast, the video, wherever you're getting this podcast. Stay up on future episodes, but more importantly, it helps me gain exposure and ranking on this giant, big tech-driven internet machine. It's all about people helping people. You know, hot sauce is so important, and I consider it a separate food group. That's why I make Micro batch, world class hot sauces, and they are available at roboriginals.com and on Amazon. That is R O B B Originals. All right, it's time. Let's do this. Cue the intro. From an undisclosed location somewhere on planet Earth, okay. here is your host, Rob Jarrett. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome to the program today, Christian Lovresetch. Christian, how are you? I hope I did not butcher your last name, but uh, it would not be the first <laughs> name you that did. I had trouble with. You didn't butcher my name. We're good. We're good. Thanks yeah. for having me, man. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, awesome. Uh, where are you located in the world, Christian? South Florida, Fort Lauderdale. Awesome. So it's probably a nice weather there. We had a little bit of chill in the air and some rain up here in central ohio but uh nothing i can't deal with wait till yeah. the snow flies that's um, the reason why we can't keep people under control and try to get them to just stay inside <laughs> yeah yeah right on right on hey christian why don't you bring my audience up to speed a little bit about what you do your thing and uh, maybe your journey and how you got to be where you are today sure sure so um i i do digital media uh May, uh, sorry, I just went blank for a second. Sorry, it's been a long day. Yeah. So I do digital media, uh, especially Facebook ads, uh, Facebook ads expert, I guess you could call me. Uh, and I do a lot of consulting for brands, e-commerce, uh, how to take them from six figures to seven, eight, nine figures and beyond. Um, brands are already established. And it all started, uh, I've actually been an entrepreneur uh, my whole life. Uh, I grew up in an entrepreneur family. My dad had his own business. My grandfather had his own business. He, he big businesses too, uh, lots mm-hmm. of employees and all that stuff. So I grew up around that stuff, but believe it or not, uh, I always had like the side hustle, I guess you could call it growing up yeah. in school, you know, I was sold things on the side, stuff right. like that. And then, uh, you know, I took the regular route because my parents wanted me to go to college and all that stuff. And uh, I dropped out my sophomore year. I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> I love to partying. I love, I'm having a great time, but yeah. I want to make money and I want to make it now. And so I started uh, my first business in Dallas, Texas. And I was there for uh, close to nine years, I believe. Mm -hmm. It was was a brick and mortar business. And then when the economy collapsed, as a young uh, entrepreneur, I was very mature with my money and I spent it on a lot of useless things, you know, like most kids do when you get (coughs) into a lot of money. Yeah. And uh, when the economy crashed, I was like, I got to figure this out. So I took a little break, uh, came back to Florida. I grew up in Florida. Um, And then... um, my best friend, who's a wealth advisor, he called me up. He's like, hey, man, come to Fort Lauderdale. Come back. You yeah. know, just chill. Take a year off. Figure out what you want to do and do it. So I did. And um, and I don't know where one day I was just, um, <clears throat> I was actually working with this company doing marketing, uh, just regular marketing, traditional print uh, mm-hmm. advertising, uh, because I've always been into sales and marketing and that side of thing. I was always good at it, especially mm-hmm. sales. Um, and I knew that I always wanted to do something online. I was like, I remember saying ever since I was a kid, I want to have a website. Yeah. But, you know, I would say I want to have a website, but I got distracted by a million things and I never actually like really 
you know, put my, my energy into it. Because mm-hmm. I didn't understand, you know, back then, you, you didn't have the information that you have now. Now you can just do a simple Google search and you can have like a million courses at your fingertips, right? Yeah, that teach that's... you step by step how to do things. Right. Uh, back then, forget it. I mean, you, the only way you found out about this world was like underground through friends who got you in a forum and somehow you paid for it and right. a lot of money at the time. Right. So um, I was, um, I came across uh, a little, uh, little course through one of my friends for Facebook ads when they first became public. Um, and I got a hold of it. I was just being in the right place at the right time. And that was what we called the, the beginning of the gold rush with Facebook ads where there was no competition and you literally could spend $5 and make $2,000 back with one t-shirt yeah. um, without knowing what you were doing pretty much. And uh, a lot of people made a lot of money back then. Uh, some saved it and kept going forward like I did. Some spent it all and went broke and who knows where they're at now. Yeah. Um, and I just kept going with it. Uh, I look at Facebook as a, as a video game, believe it or not. When I look at the stats on the dashboard, they're just numbers to me. It's not even like real money. It's like, okay, how can I get the highest score today? Yeah. So you know, the more I got into it and building my own brands, I, I started a couple of e-com stores. That's how I started learning. Uh, I started getting deeper and deeper into marketing and selling online, anything from uh, copywriting, sales funnels, upsells, down sales, uh, branding, you know, how to make a page convert, uh, you know, pick, uh, what do you call it, product for photography and video, mm-hmm. and advertising. I mean, I read so many books in the subject. I just became obsessed with it, you know, right? Uh, just like I did with sales back in the day. And having a sales background, it gives me a huge advantage as well. And I just kept improving, man. And it went from, you know, doing it for myself. I, I sold my first two stores for a good, ch- you know, chunk of money. And then uh, I still have one. And I just literally launched a brand new uh, brand a week ago, as a matter of fact, with one of my clients. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, people just kept asking me, can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? And then I started helping small businesses. And then the work, you know, referrals kept going out. And next thing you know, I'm working with huge brands, you know, taking them from two nine figures and it's like it's been a journey man it's been fun um i love it you know so yeah that's in a nutshell yeah <laughs> it's kind of cool. a long rant but so you've always gravitated towards the facebook side of things as far as the uh paper clicks and uh yeah yeah um i actually still remember i came across facebook and at one point i was like all right i need to learn google and, mm-hmm. I, and I went into google and i'm like ah, I just don't I don't I don't feel it like the keywords and the negative keywords I mean I know how it works like I can go in there and run ads because of like all the experience that I have but right. I'm by means not an expert on Google Ads I have somebody in my team who yeah. actually is an expert on Google Ads but I'm the guy uh with Facebook I'm obsessed with the way Facebook works I mean I guess it's because I've been there from the beginning yeah you know? So I've seen the evolution of what it was when it started to what it is now. Yeah, what makes Facebook unique uh, versus Google Ads? Because I've done both of them. Um, haven't had tremendous tremendous success with either, uh, but I don't spend too much time to try and figure it out. I just wanted to get a feel for it and uh, sort of get an understanding of it. Well, the biggest misunderstanding that people have, okay, when I started, this is a decade ago, you could literally, like I said, throw five bucks out, guess a couple of interests and you had no competition and the auction was super cheap and you can make a lot of a ton of money. Mm-hmm. Well, as it evolved and people realized that people were making money on this platform, all the big brands, like everything else, come in and start dumping the big budgets, right? right. Now the auction prices go through the roof. Yeah. On top of that, Facebook kept adding new features, new new ways of running ads and, you know, it's it, it's one of the most complicated platforms to run ads, believe it or not. It has it? 128 campaign combinations. Okay. And people have this thought, this this thing about Facebook, they think it's just easy because they use it every day as a social media platform. Right. But on the back end, it's not at all. Um, now, the, the main difference between the two, and this is what I tell people all the time. All right. You have Google, you have Facebook. Google is when people are actively seeking for something. Right. Facebook, you're interrupting their day to make them buy something from you. Okay. Now, the advantage that Facebook has is the amount of vast data that they have on the back end. There's a reason Zuckerberg's in front of Congress like every three months. They have amazing amounts of data. They know everything about you. I mean, just to give you an example, you you can't do this anymore after uh, Cambridge Analytica. But I used to be able to go in there and literally target by household income the type of car you drove down to the brand you know, married with kids, credit card, cash, you know, I mean, everything. Yeah. We still have access to some of it, but it's more broad now. Now they're letting the algorithm 
do its thing. AI okay. is taking over, doing it for you. So a lot of the manual work that I, you know, yeah. uh, did back in the day, it's not there anymore. Uh, but you still got to know what you're doing. So Google is, you're actively seeking for something. Facebook, you're interrupting their day. So for example, uh, a pipe breaks in your house. The first place you're going to go is Google to find a plumber right away. You have an emergency. Okay, plumber, Google, boom. And you find your plumber, you call them, and that's, and that's it. Right. You're never going to go to Facebook to, I need a plumber right now. Yeah. So Facebook works better uh, with products that people are passionate about or that's an impulse buy, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say that you are into, you're a cat lady, right? You're a, you're a crazy cat lady and you love your cats, right? This is where I tell people, if you put a cat product in front of those people, which if you know how to target them, you will be able to put it in front of them. Mm -hmm. They're most likely to buy from you because Facebook also knows when you buy, what you buy, how much you spend, what time of the day, what day of the week. I mean, they have all that information. It's just, you know, it's just math. Uh, but what makes it even more unique is that I tell people, not only don't just put a product that they're passionate about, like a toy for their cat. Right. Now combine that passion with a necessity. Mm -hmm. How about a cat litter that cleans itself? Right. Now that's a necessity. Yeah. And if you make a great video, a great, a great creative with it, and you know how to do a pattern interrupt, and what a pattern interrupt is, when you're scrolling the first three seconds of your video, you catch their attention with a filter or a shake or like a broken glass, you know, just to differentiate yourself from the, everything else on the feed. Mm -hmm. And if you catch them with a hook in those first three seconds, they're yours because the data knows where to throw that at. They know yeah. where to show it. So uh, are, do you, do you like print ads over the video ads or the, the, uh, the, what is it? Um, boosting something on your uh, feed. I don't do a whole lot of Facebook stuff other than the, yeah. Just, so, so when you boost Facebook does a fantastic job of saying, Hey, just give us money and we'll, we'll do it all for you. Right. One day I'm sure it will be. We're, as, we're at least a good, at least five, six years, 10 years from now. Uh, so the, 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 the ultimate goal for Facebook is to be like, anybody can do it. But mm -hmm. the reality is that's not the case. Okay. I do use boost posts, believe it or not, but I know what I'm doing. So when I go in there to boost a post, mm -hmm. I know what type, what audiences to choose. I know how to use custom audiences. So if I'm in a hurry, I can do it from my phone, boost it. All a boost is, it's an engagement campaign. Okay. Like if you go on the back end, you choose your enga engagement campaign, mm -hmm. that's a boost post. Okay. Uh, the way that I use them is to to uh, engage people or have people watch a video. And then I run a second campaign retargeting anybody who has interacted with that post, who has engaged with that post or viewed three seconds or 10 seconds of that video. That's yeah. how I use them. Uh, boosted posts are not my main, uh, you know, top of the funnel yeah. uh, go-to to make them convert. It's just awareness. It's like to build a brand. Uh, that brand that I just told you about that I just launched, I have, a, I think it's like 14, 15 boosted posts just from all the organic posts we've been making. Right. Just to bring the likes up in the page and I'm retargeting everybody who's engaging with those posts. Mm -hmm. So my, po my post, uh, my cost per purchase right now, it's like $8 and you know, it's an a hundred dollar average, average value. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's not <laughs> Google. You can't do that with Google. If, right. You know what I'm saying? Google yeah. is like a lot more expensive. You can get cheap conversions on Google. Don't get me wrong, but the, there's different, when it comes to consumer products it, you can, you have so many choices, so many different ways to go with Facebook. And that's why I like it. And you can use the power of creatives. You know, Google is just a text on the search engine when on the first uh, top of the page. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you can use Google display ads and you can see pictures and stuff like that. But the amount of placements that, that Facebook has, you can't beat it. Yeah. You know? do, you, um, do you ever work with anybody? Let's say someone has a page and I do have a page that I would like to uh, get some more. I guess it'd be follows, likes. I'm really not up on all the, the jargon that they're using. I just put one up you know, related to this podcast. And, um, you know, I have like four, four, 400 people following it, but I'd like to monetize this page. What, what kind of recommendation would you give to someone like me that would like to monetize a uh, page and be able to do some Facebook advertising? So if you have a page, uh, it really depends what your page is about. So mm -hmm. for example, if you have a podcast, I'm sure you have followers, everyone yep. who's listening likes your show and all that good stuff. So the only way you're going to be able to monetize that is by adding a shop. Facebook has shops right now built right into their platform. It's brand new. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it was available a long time ago, but now they fixed it or whatever. Okay. And now you can do your own Facebook shop. So I will put some merch there and then you can get people to buy your merch or you can create a separate store in Shopify or something like that. And you can use the actual data from your page, from your fans, anybody who has engaged, 
who engages with your page or anybody who's a fan of your page, you can actually create audiences out of that and then run different type of ads to, to monetize. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, like everything else, you know, uh, every platform, when they come out, the organic reach is massive. Yeah. And as people hop on and they get on there, your, your organic reach is going to go down. And now Facebook, it, it's down only 1% of your followers see a post from you. No kidding. So yeah, if you have 100 followers, only one or two people are going to see it because they want you to spend money. That's how they make their money. So like right <laughs> now, attention is on TikTok. You should be on TikTok right now because it's still um, very open as far as like the reach that you have. Mm-hmm. But at one point, the same th- this, the same thing is going to happen at one point. Yeah. Uh, but you'll definitely get more traction on TikTok than you would on Facebook. But, I mean, you still have to have a Facebook page, you know? Does Facebook apply the, um, I, guess, I wouldn't say the technology, but their same attitude? You're saying like 2% of people, uh, let's say you have 100 and two, two to three people are actually going to see that post. Is Does that apply to Instagram as well? Because I think Facebook owns Instagram. Absolutely. Yeah. So Facebook owns Instagram, WhatsApp and Messenger. Messenger used to be built into Facebook. So that that's how you have so many placements. So it's the same thing. They bought out uh, Instagram. Uh, I don't remember what year, but it's been at least I want to say almost a decade, mm-hmm. if not a decade. Um, so, yeah, it was it, it's the same thing. It's a, they just choked the algorithm once again. So I was and we we're joking around that a lot of influencers, quote unquote, are going to have to get real jobs now to hop onto another <laughs> platform. I mean, it's the truth. I mean, because they don't know, you know, the, I mean, some of them are very successful. Don't get me wrong. I, yeah. You know, you can, you, if you have 100,000 followers, 250,000 followers, yeah. you can make over six figures a year. People don't realize that. <clears throat> I see people making fun of influencers all the time or like some of these girls that just post pictures all day. I'm yeah. Like, one, believe it or not, it's a lot of work. You know, I have, I have, you know, plenty of people that I know in that industry. It's like, they're not just like taking a candid picture and then posting it. No, they're they're calculating what time of the day, the day of the week, how the shot is being made. They take a million pictures, they mm-hmm. get edited, and it's all crafted and calculated to the point. And, you know, I mean, the amount of money they can make just with merch is ridiculous. Yeah. That's why people charge to do a, a shout out, what we call a shout out or put your product in their page. Think about it as you're, you're, you are your own channel, you're your own TV channel. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like. When you pay for advertising on a TV channel, you're doing the same with an influencer. You know, I I get massive results from influencer, what we call influencer campaigns, you know, based on the amount of followers and engagement rate that they have with those followers. You'll be amazed at the amount of traffic they can send your way. Yeah. Just like a podcast, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it seemed like once we got locked down with the, uh, the uh, super bug here, everybody launched a podcast. I forget what the, the numbers were, be, like in... February oh. and what they are now, it's staggering yeah. how many podcasts are out there. And I am hoping that once people can start going back outside into their favorite bars and restaurants, that some of them let these go because right now it's getting very crowded out there. I'm going to tell you something that I, because I used to think the same way that you do right now when you say, oh, there's too many podcasts out there. Everybody launch one. That is true. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you really think about it, and I see this every day with brands, everything is saturated if you really think about oh, it. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, I, you know, I, three of my clients are fitness. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they compete against each other and I'm the one running the ads. Yeah. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's like, I mean, it's and conflicting and interests, results. man. That's- yeah, I know. <laughs> but, um, here's the deal. There's so many people out there. Think about it. There's 2 billion yeah. active billion. Would it be two active billion users on Facebook? Mm-hmm. Right. For your podcast to be successful or for your product to be successful, you don't need that much traffic. No. You know, if you know that this is the trick, this is the secret. If you know how to steal that traffic and bring it to you, right. you'll be successful. Yeah. You, you'll make a lot of money and, everybody, and, and people will know who you are. I, we have a saying in my industry, we say niches, uh, riches are in the niches. Yeah, The absolutely. more you niche down, the more money you'll make. Because those are your true followers, your true passionate, your tribe, your passionate people. Yeah. So anybody that's out there, I don't care if you have an idea about fitness. How many legging companies are out there? Yeah. That was one of my first stores. I sold it and made a good amount of money. Yep. You know, and there's still a million out there. There's a reason why they're still there, because there's a way you can steal some of that traffic and make money with it. Yeah. When you niche down and you get really narrow, how do you maintain fresh content with with such a narrow focus that's that's always been a concern when i talk to people i'm like you know 
I tell everyone you gotta you gotta get within a niche, man, and it's gotta be narrow and be focused on it. But then you can only say so many things about, let's say you're into refrigerator magnets, you know? <laughs> I mean, right. you can only say so much about a refrigerator magnet. Yeah, I understand. And, uh, but, and it's all content driven. Like people are just looking for fresh content constantly about this one little thing. Here, here's the trick. You gotta keep learning. You can't just, I mean, I learn every day. I read books. I, I don't even know how many books I read in a year. I have no idea. Between audiobooks and real books, yeah. like, I have no idea how many I read. So, you know, that's a lot of information, right? Yeah. That's in your head and you're not going to remember it all on the spot. I mean, yeah. I go back to them all the time. Like, let me, let me pull this up. Uh, but uh, the way that I do, I actually have a video of it on my, on my YouTube channel was now don't judge me. It's like one of my first YouTube videos. So it's really ghetto, horrible lighting. And I was <laughs> like, you know, I was like, I was kind of all over the place, but if you watch it, you'll get the idea. It's called a Hydra strategy. Okay. Okay. And what you do is, you create one piece of content or you or you grab, you know, you create, let's say, a video. And then from that video, you you pick out the topics and you break them down into little smaller chunks of content concentrating on that. Mm -hmm. For example, if you get on my YouTube channel, um, search my name, uh, you go, I have Facebook marketing. A whole playlist is Facebook marketing, okay. right? But yep. out of that playlist, I have, you know, how to craft campaigns. And then I go, how to craft CVO campaigns, campaign budget optimization, how to craft ad set budget optimization, interests versus behavioral interests or demographics, uh, video ads or image ads, mm -hmm. you know, carousel, you know, you just got to keep breaking it down, down and down farther, farther and farther. And I'm telling you, and, and you got to sit down and really write down a list mm -hmm. and just brainstorm like, and then you break each topic down as much as you can. Another way to get ideas, uh, just Google your topic and see what's out there. You know, yeah. go to and join forums. You know, I have, I have, I'm part of two masterminds. We colleagues that do what I do, and we talk all day long about what we do, and we exchange ideas and, you know, and results and stuff like that. So I always have fresh, you know, information coming my way. Yeah. And whatever you're in, there's always going to be updates. There's always going to be something new. Uh, you know, so that's 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 the way. That's the best way that you can keep up with it. Yeah. You know, just keep yeah. learning. Yeah, I, uh, I and I tell people too, you know, you can update your content. It's just, it, it could be a year old and it's okay to talk about the same thing and just talk about what's new within that little, you know, subtitle, subtopic there. Absolutely. I mean, and listen, I, I stick personally for my personal brand, I stick to just one channel, mm -hmm. YouTube mm -hmm. and, and Twitter every once in a while. And Twitter is mo more for my colleagues, not even like, you know, try to get business or anything. Yeah. And, but my, my channel is YouTube. So this is what I tell people. When you start out, don't try to do them all because you're not going to be able to. And right. depending on what you do, it's a, every platform is different, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to create content for that specific platform. For me, YouTube is the best because I don't like to write. I mean, I can do copywriting for ads and stuff like sales funnels, and stuff like that. But I don't enjoy writing. I don't, right. That's why I don't have a blog, right. right? So what I do is I do it on video. And then I pay somebody to transcribe the whole thing. And then it's used as a blog. Okay. Right? Yeah. Because I don't want to write the blog. Yeah. Some people are not comfortable with videos. So if you're a writer and you love to write, write a blog all day long. And eventually, the more you write, the more content you put out there, it's going to come back to you. Is anyone um, still doing blogs? Man, I don't pay much attention to them. Absolutely, man. They? Go to Medium. There's people making literally $3,000 a blog just from traffic going to the Medium. Hmm. Uh, and that's when, like, it's. I wish, like, I had like a megaphone, uh, and and I had to stop this because I, I, I get, I'm so passionate about all of this. I used to go, I'm like, dude, you can make so much money, just, just make videos, make content, and trust me, eventually, all this traffic comes to you. Yeah, I'll give you the perfect example. All right, I started my YouTube channel a year ago, and I said I'm gonna put out three videos a week, no matter what. Okay. Now, Keep in mind, what I do is extremely niche down. And when people go to find out about Facebook ads on YouTube, yeah. they're only looking for the answer. So to keep them engaged, it's extremely hard. Right. Okay? It's not like some of these kids that have like 3 million uh, subscribers because they're funny and they're fun and all that stuff. Right. My stuff is business, very niche down, very specific. Think about it. How many people specialize in running Facebook ads? Not, I mean, there's a lot, but not many if you really think about it. And I literally saw my 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 YouTube channel go from nothing until about 35 videos. The algorithm went, okay, this guy's for real. Mm -hmm. And I know what I'm doing. So I knew how to do the description, the tags and all that stuff. Yeah.
but there was nothing for the first 35 videos. Yeah. And that can be very demoralizing. Like, yeah, that's people always give up. You know, they'll start, they'll put six or seven or eight out there, and then they like, I'm, I'm not getting any up, views, right? and then they just bail. Listen, I have my days too, and I don't feel like doing it. Yeah. Right? Well, you were you that, were just saying, man, in, being an influencer is hard work. Trying to be a YouTuber is hard work because there are a lot of days you don't feel like making a video. Oh, dude, people don't, don't understand how hard it is. Like for what I do, I'm horrible about that. I'm, I don't know how I do it, but I literally come up with the idea of what I'm going to talk about that morning. Yeah. Then I'll shoot it around 1 p.m. Then it goes to my video editor, my graphic designer, and then they they bring it back to me by like 4 p.m. And then I load it up real quick. I make a, a half an hour opening that day. Yeah. Uh, and I'll upload it real quick, write the description. I should actually have somebody do it, but I'm, I'm really trying to do it myself just to see how long it takes me to get yeah. monetized. Um, and then I just post it before six o'clock because I know that's when the rush comes in. But yeah. I swear, if you do it, you will see it. This is every platform. You just got to stick to it. And if you stick to it, there's going to be days you're going to wake up and you don't feel like doing it. Yeah. And it. Listen, if you don't feel like doing it, then don't do it. Then don't do it. There's days. I mean, if you go to my YouTube channel, I mean, you can see there's a skip. Every once I get too busy with actual work uh -huh. or, you know, I, you know, every day I'm not in a great mood. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to be in front of the camera and be like, hey, guys, you know, so you're going to have to. That's perfectly normal. But the, you have to enjoy it. If you start to hate it, then that's not for you. Yeah. And you shouldn't do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Hey, when um, so put these three things in order of importance. Let's talk about YouTube videos. Um, title. Right description and tags which which of those is the most important that order title description and tags. okay tax uh, i used to believe when i was first learning it uh, i used to believe that they were the most important they're actually not believe it or not um i use an extension called vit iq okay uh, you can get the free version and it actually you can start with the free version if you don't want to pay for it uh, and it gives you almost everything that you need to get started uh, and it actually tells you how long your title should be. Mm -hmm. It tells you what um, uh, what the tax should be. So based on the tax and the content on the video, we'll tell you, okay, you got it. You got to include these words on the title and these tags in the actual description itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and as long as you do that, it'll it'll get picked up by uh, YouTube. Like <laughs> another project that I started with, once I started learning YouTube, I learned this is a secret, guys, but some of you, you do it right, you can make a lot of money. So I'm going to give it away in your show. All right. All right. There's this thing called cash cow channels. Okay. What a cash cow channel is, is like um, you have a channel that's niche down, let's say pets, or let's say kids, or let's say cars, yeah. you know? And you make like one of those styles, like top 10 cars in the world, you know, right. hyper cars or whatever. Okay. And then you edit your video, you, you make it 10 minutes long because the YouTube algorithm likes anything above 10, between 10 and 14 at the most. Okay. It's like the sweet spot. Okay. And you can fit uh, six ad breaks in there between two minutes each. Okay. So you make more money. Yeah. So uh, you don't have to be in front of the camera. You can just edit it yourself. Uh, you can over, you know, if you have a microphone, you can do the voice. Right. Uh, or you can hire a team to do it. I have a team that they do mine. Yeah. So at the same time, I started a cash cow channel. Yeah. And let me tell you, it is crazy, man. That that channel, it's like 10 times bigger than my actual yeah. you know, Facebook channel because it's for everybody. You know what I mean? I picked an audience that's passionate, yeah. just like I do with ads. And it, it it's crazy, man. So when people tell you it's saturated, it's not. Yeah. The algorithm knows where to put it, who to put it in front of, and people will watch it. Let me add another element in there as far as optimizing for Facebook. Uh, I've always heard that the thumbnail is the most important thing you do, and people will spend hours on their thumbnails. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, for example, there's another golden nugget if you do Facebook ads. Uh, one of my my favorite uh, quote unquote hacks is I I run. You should always be testing all types of creatives. So you should be doing images. You should be doing videos. Okay. So usually, what I do, there's two things that I do to to do what's called a pattern interrupt to make you stop scrolling. One, I will use the image from my best performing image ad. So if it's the same product, I will use the image of that product as my thumbnail for the video, even if it's not like, you know, if it's related to the product. Yeah. Because I know it will make you stop. Yeah. I have the data that tells me so. Uh, that's one. Another one that I like to do is I'll use a thumbnail with like, I'll put a red box around, you know, the an image that's part of the video. Or I will do, uh, I will pixelate a frame of the video. Uh -huh. Or I will make it look like a shatter screen. 
I will grab people's faces and I'm, you know, I'll jag it like, I'll move it like, right. well, people can't see who are listening, yeah. but you know, I'll, I will split it in half. <laughs> right. So it looks like it's broke. The image is broken. Yeah. And those are little hacks that will make you stop and take a second look. Another thing that works well, uh, Facebook is social media. So, you know, if you can use, you know, people in your thumbnails or, um, you know, for a while there, all the internet marketers were using pictures of them and their girlfriends or their wives and it worked like a charm, you know, yeah. and then everybody started doing it. Of course. Right. Uh, so we kind of stop, but another thing that works is black and white, you know, your feet's all these colors and Instagram is all these bright colors. And when you put something that's black and white, yeah. it'll make you stop because it, it stands out. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome information, man. How do people find you if they wanted to, uh, learn more about what you're doing and what you're offering online, what your content is, what's the best way? To sure. Um, if you want this, I have a podcast, so that's uh, pixel feed radio. It's the same, uh, format as yours. I've had it since I started the YouTube channel. It's actually part of the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's called Pixel Feed Radio, so you can look it up on every podcast platform, or you know you can find me on YouTube if you want to learn about Facebook ads, digital marketing, sales funnels, sales and uh, you know sales in general, uh, and advertising. I uh, just search my name, my name, Christian Loverich, L O V R E C I C H, or you can just search Pixel Feed. Cool. P I X L F E E D. If you have an e-commerce store that's already making sales. Uh, five or six figures and it's a proven product you know you have you have it together it's already proven and you would like to take it to the next level with facebook ads uh, you can find me at pixelfeedmedia.com and that's p-i-x-l uh, feedmedia.com cool i'll i'll uh, i always do i put those in the description of this podcast wherever it may play or show you yeah on facebook too. yeah everywhere right on man <laughs> you're uh you're probably I know you're easy to find because I did some some research on you, so I know it's easy. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm everywhere. Yeah. Just search you're my one name. Of those I know people. my name is tricky, yeah. but you know, if you butcher my name, it'll still come up. I promise you. I had a friend once that told me back back in the day I was all over. You know, I had to be a part of every social media platform that was coming out. And he's like, man, yeah. if aliens came down, they would think you were someone important because you're on all oh. of these things. <laughs> Dude, like people people are so afraid of privacy and they don't even know what I know. Yeah. Like, you know, the only thing that I do like to protect myself, believe it or not, this is the, the thing that freaks me out. When I'm in front of my computer or my laptop, the camera's covered. Yeah. Like, because I know you can act, that's so easy to access yeah. from the outside if you don't have a firewall. And even if you do, they can access it. Yeah. Uh, but listen, man, uh, I, I'm a child of the internet. Yeah. The information's out there. It's been there. You know, everything's out there. I know how to keep a lot of it private, but let's, you know, there's ways people can get it if they really want to. Yeah. You know what I mean? So for sure. Just use your best judgment. But if somebody wants to find you, all we have to do is go to the dark web, man. We'll find everything about you in <laughs> yeah. seconds. So, yeah, that's you know that's a place I don't recommend you go unless you're ready. No. Unless no, you're ready. If you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> don't go if you don't know what you're doing. I actually showed it to one of my friends. Uh, because he didn't believe it. And I was like, uh, dude, you can literally buy anything you want. Yep. Like you can literally go in a place that looks like Amazon and get like drugs. Like he's like, no way. I was like, check this out. He's like, oh my God. I was like, yeah, dude, this is the real internet. Yeah. That's like yeah. not, you know, what everybody's It's the wild, wild West, man. It is. I don't, I don't know it's how they're going to put a lid on it either. It's just going to continue to uh, evolve. It's way ahead of the, uh, the security. It's a cat and mouse game, man. You'll never be able to stop it. No. You know, it's human nature, you know. Dude, it was great talking to you. Same here, man. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. I got to have you on mine too. I got to have you come out, come back. Yeah, I would love, so. love to. Um, hang with me here when we sign out so I can get some files uploaded. Ladies and gentlemen, Christian and I, we are out. Go out and have a great day. Thank you. Hey, before we take off today, here is a reminder to head over to robcast.com to donate if you wish. Most important thing you can do, though, is comment, share, like, subscribe, thumbs up, all the things that tells the internet that what we're doing here is pretty cool. Hey, support those who support me by visiting them online. Links are in the description below. And we'll talk about hot sauce. You know I make world-class micro-batch hot sauces available at roboriginals.com. That is R-O-B-B -B Originals. Also available on Amazon.com. California Wine Club, small batch wines hand-selected from real working wineries. Blue Coolers, the ultimate cooler for boating, fishing, hunting, weekend warriors, tailgaters, you name it. You need a cooler, you need a blue cooler. Um, Mountain Made CBD, and Mountain Made is changing the game of high-dose CBD tablets. They make them at an affordable price. Their products are THC-free. 
Third party tested for accuracy, cleanliness, and potency. Nationwide shipping, what more could you want? Mountain Made is focused on creating a high quality product to help those who want to live a very activated lifestyle get out there every day and crush it. I use it. I've had nothing but good things to say about it. I feel a noticeable impact and some betterment in every day I wake up. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, there are no ordinary days. Make this one outstanding. Go out and do something great for yourself and more importantly, for someone else. That is a wrap for today. Thanks for stopping in. I am out.